OK, here we go. I know plenty of you have been waiting for this moment uh, for quite some time. Well, actually, since, you know, uh, Saturday morning, there or thereabouts. Derma is here uh, for RefWatch. Very good morning to you, Derma. Sue and Stephen are still here to provide the voice of reason uh, <laughs> as we go. So, so, so God help you, Dermot. Uh, right, uh, let's start, <laughs> shall we, then? There's only one place to start, the, the Manchester derby. Bruno Fernandes scoring with Marcus Rashford offside, or was he? Right, OK, um, that's the goal as it developed. The key thing to notice here is Akanji checks his run, Dermot, doesn't he, to play Rashford offside. And uh, Rashford doesn't touch the ball, um, but uh, Bruno Fernandes comes in and scores it there. Right. First of all, Dermot, yes or no, should the goal have stood? Uh, as a referee, I would have given offside, but what I would say, it's difficult because it's a subjective decision, so different people have interpreted it differently. For me personally, I think the safest decision is offside, and I think for a number of reasons. I think Rashford is too close to the ball. I think that he impacts on the goalkeeper and he impacts on the Kanji's run. And I think he changes his running position. I think originally when you see the ball, he starts going to the right and then he goes to the left, so he goes towards the ball. I think at that point, Darren Can makes that decision. If I was a referee, I got Darren Can on the line, who would uh, run the line in the World Cup final. I think he would know more about offside than me, so I would take his view that I would blow the whistle. That, that is the law as it stands, and, yeah. and it relates, what it relates to is the impact the player has. Yeah. So he runs towards the ball, he looks like he goes to kick it there. Yeah. The key things, the key things to, to look at here, Kanji, could he have played the ball if Rashford was there? Uh, and also the goalkeeper is setting himself right. up. His eyes are only on Rashford, aren't yeah. they? Up until the moment Bruno Fernandes hits it. So it is quite clear that the player, i.e. Rashford, is having an impact not only uh, on the defenders, but on the goalkeeper and those around him. It's quite clear to you, it's quite clear to me. If you watch the run from behind the goal, you see the referee's view. And this is why it becomes, the law becomes so complex, that this is the view, Right, if you stop now, you see where the referee is. And the referee at that point, he sees the dis distance between Akanji and Rashford, and he feels in his mind, because he's made that decision, that Akanji's not going to get there. He also, the law says, does Rashford touch the ball? He doesn't. So we're clear on that. Does he impact on an opponent? Well, does he impact on Edison? Has Edison got to think, is Rashford going to shoot? Is Fernandes going to shoot? Well, again, Stuart Atwell has decided no, so he's made that decision. He's gone to Darren Can, they've spoken about it. The difficulty is, if Darren Can interprets it one way and Stuart interprets it another, the vote's 1-1. One, one. If the vote's 1-1, one, one, the referee's always going to back himself. And he's decided, with the law as it is, he feels that Rashford hasn't touched the ball, which he hasn't, and he hasn't impacted on a Kanji and the goalkeeper. OK. So um, therefore he's given the goal. Let's, let's explore that a bit further because Rashford makes the run from Akanji's right-hand side mm. to his left-hand mm. side. Yep. So therefore he, he automatically blocks Akanji's run. Mm. If we have a look at this with the wizardry of modern technology, that is the shot without Rashford in it. Mm. So if Rashford isn't there, that's the view. So in that instance, you, 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 you're almost guaranteeing Akanji's going to get there, aren't you? Um, He's going to get there ahead of anyone else. Yeah, but unfortunately Rashford was there, wasn't he? Yeah, but, so uh, therefore he's impacting, isn't he? Yeah, but you can check and, and, and the rule, the, the, the law that's on the bottom of your screen now at this moment quite clearly shows that therefore it should have been ruled off. Yes, but as I try to explain, Rob, that's not the law. That's a bullet point in the law. There is four of them. And three others say, does he touch the ball? No. He goes to play the ball just there. Yeah. And then steps off yeah. it. And that's why I say, you know, I've been quite clear. I think the safest option for me would have been to give offside. The referee chose not to, and he chose not to for the reasons I've given you. And the knock-on effect from that that I was going to go on to is, there's the referee's view, and that's why he's made that decision. The knock-on effect from the referee making that decision is the VAR can't intervene, because the VAR rules is it a factual offside? Well, it's not a factual offside. This is actually a subjective offside. And the referee has decided, in his view, it didn't fulfil the criteria. 
So therefore the VAR has no evidence to go against him because his view is supported by law. In that instance, can you, because the referee's, you call it down the barrel, the referee's view is down the barrel, perspective, mm. a distance, also the eye line, perhaps of Edison, mm. um, is, can't be taken into account because he's looking that way. You, that, that depth of field that you talk about, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. In that instance, could he have been sent over to the monitor to have a look? Well, I would suspect that when he went to Darren Cam. Darren Cann has got that view you're talking about and he would have been able to say, look, that's where Rashford is, that's where Edison is, and he could feed that information. So with that information in his locker then, he can pull his resources. <coughs> but would he have asked the question, do you think, did you flag offside because you thought Rashford had touched the ball? And he would say, yes, because from his angle, I would think Darren Cann, it looks like Rashford's touched the ball. He has seen that Rashford hasn't and therefore gives it to Bruno Fernandes. Quite possible. Whereas actually, that's a bit of a red herring because it's the run from Rashford and his position in Edison's eye line, which is actually the interfering with play there or being active on the pitch at that time. Quite possibly, but what happens, they spoke, didn't they? There's no doubt about that. So Darren Cam will say, this is why I flagged. This is what I've seen. Now, he would have seen Rashford, he would have seen Edison, he would have seen Akanji. Whether he's seen a touch on the ball or thinks he's seen a touch on the ball, we don't know. And Stuart, as you say, has got the alternative view down the barrel, as I describe it, and you said. And as I said, he will see where Akanji is. He will see where Edison is. And he's made his decision based on that. The unfortunate thing is, because how the law set up, that it does allow him to make that judgment. And that's what, it is unfortunate because the chance of that happening, you know, again, very, very soon, would be so remote because it, it is so unusual you know, to have that player come in like that. But it, it was just one of them decisions that you look at over and over again and you think, when it's happened, what was... I always think, what's the safest option for me as a referee? You know, that, that's not being a coward. It's, it's making, keeping it simple, keeping it safe. And I, I default back to Darren can run the line on the World Cup. He's an expert. I've got this view, he's got that view. When I speak to him, you know, what do you think? I think if he flagged, I would have whistled. Stewart didn't, that's his choice. Referee has a choice on the field, it's his choice. When he goes to the assistant, he's not duty bound to take his decision. What Darren Can offered was advice, advice to help him make his decision. And based on what Darren Can told him and what he saw, he arose at that decision. But unfortunately, when he arose at that decision, he blocked Michael Oliver out. And I think that was the biggest thing to everybody is, <coughs> excuse me, why is it not gone to the VAR? Why is he not gone to the screen? Well, he can't go to the screen because it's not factual, it's subjective, and there's nothing that Michael Oliver can say to change his mind. People are sent to the screen for subjective, though, aren't they? Not for offside. Okay. Uh, offside, when they go to the screen, if it's subjective offside, they go, but he's already made that decision on the field. It wasn't one that was drawn to his attention. OK, I'm, I'm baffled by that, because there's plenty of subjective decisions which are sent, and this is a subjective decision. Yeah, but Rob, their, their penalties, red cards, such like, with offside... But did, did he... It's the subjective argument here is, did, was he active? Was he interfering, as that IFAB rule directive mm. said? Yeah. And that's a subjective decision, which is the whole point of this discussion, yes, isn't absolutely. it? Quite clearly, Rashford was offside. It's whether he, he was active mm. in that attack. So, therefore, it's a, just a subjective decision about... We'll see one later on, won't we, at St James's Park? Was that a penalty? Wasn't that yeah. a penalty? But the it's different, still the, the same difference thing. here was the referee had made that decision and the VAR would have listened to that and heard him say, in my view, he hasn't impacted here, here and here. And when the VAR is looking at it, he can't argue that because it's not clearly wrong because it's a subjective decision. So therefore, if he sends the referee to the screen, the referee's going to look at the same thing and make the same decision. It's not as if he's going to say, you need to look at this because this happened behind your back. But yeah, he, but we talked about that, the, the depth of field. You could say, look, we, we can show you another angle here that shows that he cut across a kanji, that Edison's eyes were only fixed on him mm. because he didn't see Bruno Fernandes coming. Mm. And therefore, actually, the referee will go, oh, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, because of where I was stood, which is no fault of his own. Mm. All right, I got you. I understand. Yeah, but we can drill down as much as we want, Rob. The, the bottom line is, to cut it short, is 
The assistant felt that Rashford committed an offside offence, that's why he flagged. The referee felt that Rashford didn't commit an offside offence because of how the law's configured. He said no, so therefore he has the overruling vote. The VAR, because it's a subjective decision that the referee's made on the field, is eliminated. I've got a, my, my head is spinning, so let's go to, <laughs> to the other voice of reason, uh, Sue Smith. Uh, you've heard all of that, subjectivity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this involves, yeah, we'll, we'll come to you, Sue. You're the outspoken voice of reason. Let's come, uh, come to Sue, who, who, who Dermot loves. So let, let's come to you, first of all, Sue. Mutual. Um, Right, this idea of subjectivity, if, if the referee had seen another uh, perhaps angle of it as, yeah. we, as VAR can deliver, and we see with penalties and yeah. other decisions, red cards, all of those. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. You know, the, the referee probably needs as much help as, as possible because I think we're all in agreement in terms of... Marcus Rashford was interfering with play in terms of he was interfering with a kanji coming across, the way that kanji held his run initially to get Marcus Rashford offside. Then he couldn't come across because he was there to, to block uh, Bruno Fernandes. And then I think the one that... that you could clearly see was from behind Bruno Fernandes. So you can see Edison is clearly set for a Rashford shot. So that's difficult for a goalkeeper. You're set for a shot and then suddenly someone else takes a shot. You've got to quickly adapt to that. So... You know, there's no doubt in my mind that he's interfering with that. So, you know, and has an impact on that defender and on that goalkeeper. So, yeah, I just think that, like Dermot actually explained really well, the safest decision would have been to just call offside. Stephen, so talk us through. We'll show it again and talk us through what your view is on it. Um, I mean, the big thing for me is is Rashford's obviously in an, in an offside position, but to continue his run, if he stops his run, Bruno Fernandes has every right to go through and score. But I think that then changes Carl Walker's run. Carl Walker is almost expecting Rashford to hit the shot, and he's thinking, well, hit the shot because you're offside. He adjusts his position, yeah. and then we, we obviously know. Edison, like Sue says, is, is adjusting to Marcus Rashford's shot. He's not expecting Bruno Fernandes to shoot. Um, the big thing for me is, is we're all discussing this now. We'll never know the outcome of this. Decisions like this have to be made public. They have to come out and tell us why, what the discussion was, why they came to that decision. Me and Sue don't only do like this show, we do co-commentaries. Whenever you do a co-commentary now, I haven't got a clue what the offside rule is. I haven't got a clue. I don't, I don't know the offside rule because it's changed that many times lately. It's, it, it's so complicated. That wasn't complicated, though. That was just so clear and obvious. He's interfered with play. He's taken two people's three people's attention, Akanji, Edison and Carl Walker's attention. So straight away, he's interfered with play. And... I spoke to, I was, I was speaking to my brother yesterday and my brother just turned around, he's on the pitch. <laughs> of course he's interfering with play. And it, it's true though, it, it, it's, it's so obvious that he's took the attention of three players. So by doing that, he's interfering with play and he's offside. Um, but again, come out and speak about it. Come out and be clear, let us know why. <laughs> but we don't hear, and that's the frustration part of it. Because if it gets cleared up and we go, OK, we understand the reasons, whether we agree with it or not, but we'll never know.